Welcome back guys. I'm Gary with Automatic Door and Hardware. We're a manufacturer of commercial doors, automatic doors, and the parts and hardware that go with those doors. If you like learning about doors and hardware, then you've come to the right place. Each day we produce two or three videos related to this. So if this interests you, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Okay guys, so our topic today is how do hands-free door openers work? And when we say hands-free, what we're referring to is touchless, a touchless automatic door opener. So the normal, uh, the industry standard before was a push to open activation handicap door opener. So if you've ever been to a hospital or anything like that, most likely you've come across uh, a square stainless steel uh, push pad with the words press to open and accessibility symbol on that uh, activation switch. And the norm used to be you press that button and it would then activate the low energy handicap door opener uh, and it would swing the door open and you'd go through the doorway. Uh, well, with in today's environment, uh, there is a lot more popularity in controlling the spread of germs. Um, and what I mean by that is there is actually a statistic where about 80% of all uh, sickness causing germs are actually spread by hands. As well as if you have damp hands, it's more likely to spread a thousand times more than dry hands. So you could see where a lot of the, uh, a lot of the health concerns can be solved using touchless activation. So what a hands-free door opener is, is it's uh, an automatic door opener that is integrated with uh, hands-free or touchless wave to open activation switches. Um, so how does this work? Well, it works essentially by the installer will mount a, an activation switch, a touchless activation switch on the wall, just as they would a normal push to open switch. Uh, with our unit, we offer the Warhawk touchless switches. Now, the Warhawk is different than any other switches on the market, mainly because we use wireless technology. We use 2.4 gigahertz wireless technology. And other switches are all hardwired. So with a hardwired switch, you have to run wire through the wall in a concealed way and bring it all the way to the door opener. And it's a really lengthy process. Uh, if you're an electrician, you're used to running wire, it may not be an issue for you, but we've totally eliminated that with our uh, Warhawk touchless switches, which are completely wireless. Um, and so how it works is you put the Warhawk wireless receiver in the automatic door opener header box and connect it to the automatic door opener control box. And what happens is the wireless, acti the wireless touchless activation switch is runs on four AAA batteries and you simply wave your hand the detection range is 1 to 12 inches and it's totally adjustable and it will actually send that 2.4 gigahertz signal to the receiver uh, to activate the door now with 2.4 gigahertz this frequency uh, is the top frequency you can do for an automatic door uh, transmitter so to speak uh, if you're familiar, uh, if you're familiar at all with wavelengths and frequencies, the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. So if you have a, uh, if you have like a 315 megahertz transmitter, that's going to have going to have a much longer wavelength than that of a 900 megahertz transmitter or that of a 2.4 gigahertz uh, transmitter. So with with the higher frequency means a lower or a uh, a smaller wavelength and what that actually indicates is the wavelength when you transmit a signal it emits that wavelength and it's actually able to penetrate through uh, more objects and just uh, tran transmit better than that of a longer wavelength which you know could run into uh, obstructions or things like that so that's so that's essentially why sometimes if you've ever used a 300, 315 megahertz transmitter, you'll quickly realize it's a lot more finicky. You may not always get the signal. They have to be set up just right. Um, there's a lot of interference issues with some, uh, lower frequency transmitters like that versus 
the high frequency uh, transmitters. So that's essentially how a touchless or hands-free automatic door opener works. So what are some of the applications that actually use these hands-free or touchless do automatic door openers? Well, in the past, I'd say about 10 to 20 years ago, touchless activation was available for handicapped door openers, but really they saw more adoption in countries like Asia and not so much in America. Uh, in America, there were touchless door openers. However, those were really only utilized in special applications such as clean rooms or manufacturing facilities that required uh, cleanliness. For example, uh, a micro trip factory or something of that nature. Uh, however, in today's market, it's really increased in adoption, which is a great thing, obviously, because it helps reduce the spread of germs and contaminants. However, it's still not to the point where it should be in terms of mass adoption, uh, mainly because it's really not a requirement yet. Uh, and what I mean by that is you, if you go into a hospital or a healthcare facility, there's a good chance that that commercial restroom door will have some sort of touchless activation. Um, there's been a push with applying that uh, you know, into hospitals. However, if you go into a facility like a hotel or a grocery store, it's still very rare to actually see touchless activation on a restroom door. Um, now, should they have touchless activation on a restroom door? Absolutely, because we know with restrooms, you know, a lot of germs can be spread and it's just a better cleanliness. But again, you know, as of right now, we are not quite there yet. Uh, it's definitely gaining more adoption, but it's still, uh, you know, lacking on more of the retail side, such as, you know, retail store use and, uh, you know, commercial office use and basically any other commercial building that's not a healthcare facility. So with more adoption of touchless door openers or hands-free door openers, there have been uh, some pushes by um, hardware manufacturers to come out with more of a mechanical hands-free door opener solution. And what I mean by this is they have either a foot pole, which is designed to mount to the base of the door and essentially works by you stepping on the, the, the pole handle or, and pulling the door open manually by your foot. And then there have been other ones with commercial doors that utilize uh, some sort of hook, hook projection lever design that's designed to attach to your door handle so that you can grab it by your arm. So there are other mechanical hands-free door openers. However, I will say this, right now, the hands-free door opener, as far as the mechanical, is very, is very, uh, new and it hasn't necessarily reached any sort of uh, you know certification process yet you know as far as I can tell and when I refer to certification what I mean by that is safety um, anytime you have uh, some sort of handle or object which projects out away from the door that can be a dangerous uh, a component to the door and why do I say that well some of these door handle hands-free uh, door opener add-ons which are mechanical and project out from the handle can project out three or four inches and that's essentially having a piece of metal bar that's sticking out away from your door four inches now why is that dangerous well if you're looking at a retail store you know picture this you have a commercial building with 10 stores all with commercial storefront doors and handles and they all have that hands-free uh, hook handle projection out on it well that's projecting about four inches away from the door along that path that shopping path that sidewalk across the buildings you know you could have children elderly uh, just people in general walking past that door and again because these the mechanical hands-free door openers are so new a lot of people don't expect to run into something like that and it, more often or not you'd be surprised how many people can get hooked by that and get hurt or if you're having a cane you hit the bottom uh, foot pole and trip over um, if you're a child maybe they're rollerblading or skateboarding down the sidewalk and they don't expect to see that and it snags them 
uh, it's essentially the same effect as if, I don't know if any of you, this has happened to any of you guys, but have you ever walked down the sidewalk uh, along a parking lot and you have a big truck that backs in and parks and his tailgate sticking out past um, the sidewalk a little and he has a, uh, a tow, uh, a tow hook on it, you know, and you run and you hit your, you hit your uh, shin right on it and it hurts like crazy. Well, that's the same idea what could happen with these mechanical touchless door openers, um, or the mechanical ones at least. So it's in my opinion, you're always better off to go with uh, the true solution, which would be an automated uh, wave to open door opener, uh, electric power door opener. The mechanical solutions, although they might be cheap, uh, cheap inexpensive ways of making your door hands-free, uh, in reality, they could be uh, dangerous in terms of you adding that to your door. Because at the end of the day, what is the most important thing with uh, commercial doors uh, and building codes and things of that nature is its safety. And by having something that projects so far out of the door and hooks can potentially hook or hit somebody, you know, if they're opening the door, if it's just staying closed, um, it's really a danger. So that's something you should consider.